a nighttime view shows a forest. I think I always make films about the things that are the scariest things for me to deal with. A title appears. Beyond the Lens, Rodney Evans, Vision Portraits. My name is Rodney Evans, and I am the writer, director, producer, and co-editor of Vision Portraits. I have a condition that's called retinitis pigmentosa. That leaves me with very minimal peripheral vision and minimal night vision. There. And there. And then there. Like a horse with blinders. I think I'm trying to figure out what it means to work as a filmmaker. Where vision seems so central, you know, knowing that mine will eventually go away. Vision Portraits chronicles the creative process of blind and low vision artists. There's a, a dancer, Kayla Hamilton. There's a photographer, John Dugdale. A writer, Ryan Knighton. And myself as a low vision filmmaker. The film was really a confrontation with my own fear of vision loss and grappling with what would happen if my vision deteriorated. A lot of my films are deeply personal and deal with confronting fear and trauma in my own life and things that have, have been deeply unsettling to me and really wanting to grapple with those feelings in the process of making the film and hopefully coming out on the other side of the process more knowledgeable and more empowered. I mean, who knows, right? Maybe blindness is like the reversal of being a baby and you're entering this new space with all that you know and all that you've seen inside of you. So I'm a filmmaker that has worked in experimental documentary and fiction. And so I think it's, it's hard to kind of pin what I do down to one specific style. I think I tend to um, be interested in the experiences of people of color and specifically queer people of color. I was inspired by a void in representation in terms of my experience as an LGBTQ plus African American man. You know, like I just felt like that representation didn't exist when I was in college and when I was coming of age. A fisheye view shows someone walking down a train aisle. 25% of people in America identify as having a disability, yet less than 2% of characters in film and television are represented as having a disability. I think about that void between the actual lived experience of people across the country and then what gets reflected in film and TV as quote unquote reality. How does the lack of representation of disabled characters reinforce a kind of shame and a kind of stigma that those stories are things that shouldn't be seen, that should be hidden, that aren't worthy or valuable of being told. It's important for, A, for those stories to be told, and B, for those stories to be told by people with disabilities that understand that experience from the inside. I realize blindness is a point of view on the world. It's not something I should avoid. It's something I should look from. I also just want 
people to really look at these thriving, amazing, captivating artists and their work. There's so many reasons to not do something. And here are, you know, the four of us making work in, in spite of obvious challenges and continuing to do it and thrive while doing it. We're also moving and changing along with our vision and that being blind or um, having low vision doesn't necessarily equate not being able to produce art as a creative person. My best dancing is when my eyes are closed. <laughs>